Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids. Today I want to talk to you about three new everyday carry knives from Gerber. We've got some on the lower end as far as the steel and cost, and then we have some on the higher end as far as the steel and cost as well. What I can tell you is that over the last handful of years, it seems like Gerber has just pushed out a ton of different designs. Some of them I like, some of them I didn't like so much. Um, they've just got a wide variety of products out there, and um, more and more of their stuff is being made in the USA again. So when I was at SHOT Show 2018, um, they actually had, actually it might've been 2017 and 2018, but uh, they had a video camera up that was showing live a feed from their factory in Portland, Oregon, where they were having products made. So they got the pushback from people years ago saying everything's made overseas in China, and they responded. So they still have some stuff made overseas, but they have stuff made here in the US as well. So let me show you the first one, which is this. It's the Kettlebell, tiny little EDC knife. 7CR17 is the MOV. Wait, what? 7CR17 is the MOV. No, 7CR17 MOV is the steel. That's what we're trying to say, Tim. Good job. So I wouldn't call that a high-end steel, obviously, but um, better than some of the mystery seals that they've used in the past. Uh, this thing, let me just give you kind of a show to you here on both sides. So it is a frame lock. Here it is on the other side. You can see we've got kind of a, what I would call like OD for the, uh, for the handle there. You can also get it in gray as well. It's gonna run you around 27 bucks, like two and a half inches for the blade, and then uh, about 6.5 inches from end to end thumb studs to open it. Uh, what I can tell you about this knife is cool little slicing knife. You can see that that curve there on the uh, on the blade. I'm sure I'll just get my hands not to be so washed out. There, there you see, you can see some of the curve on the blade. This knife, as far as a frame lock, has the, and this is like, it sounds like a crazy statement, but if not the, it's got some of the best lockup I have ever seen. So let me just show you there. I mean, look where that thing locks up. I don't, it's, it's not gonna over travel. I don't really have any concern about that, but that is really well locked up. Now, that also means that by the nature of the tension of the frame leaning in, I have not been able to you know, loosen this thing up to just pop it and go like that. It's really like a slowly open it, clicks into place, but that thing is very firmly locked in. So you got a, a, a lanyard slot in the back. Nothing milled out on the inside for 27 bucks. You're probably not gonna get that. Aluminum for the, uh, for the handles. Um, not super heavy, not super lightweight. I would tell you that the I will tell you that the clip on this one and another one I'm going to show you in a minute, very snug. So you may have to loosen that up a little bit to get it more. I guess just easier to take in and out of your uh, of your pocket. But cool little knife. I mean, you, let me do that again just so you can hear it. The click when it locks in is just like okay, that's locked. I mean, it's like loud in my ear. Now, this is not made to replace your Benchmade Griptilian or you know your Benchmade Triage, whatever it might and be, ZT stuff like that. But for 27 bucks, cool little knife. Uh, it's been fun to use, and I'm gonna roll in some footage here so you can see what it looks like in use. Now, of course, because your blade is so short, you're not gonna be slicing through, you know, and you don't have a whole lot of length of pole, basically is what I'm saying. But, you know, for little EDC tasks, opening boxes, opening packages, cutting some ropes, some twine, things like that, this thing has been uh, fun to use. And I like the color, I like that OD. Actually, the um, I was torn between getting the gray and the, uh, the OD, but that's, I think that's just kind of a, a sweet color right there. So simple little knife, does the job, 27 bucks. The thing I like about spending that amount of money on a knife is um, you you know that you're not gonna get something that you're like, this is the ultimate beater knife that I can just you know get out there and use super aggressively, it's gonna stay sharp forever. You know with like 7CR17, it's gonna, it's gonna dull up eventually, but you just gotta sharpen it up. And for me, when I think about everyday carry knives, um, it is nice to have a knife that's got good steel, that's just gonna stay sharp for a long time. My Benchmade Griptilian is my favorite of all time. Um, but for me, on the other hand, like an EDC knife, I'm kind of like, if it dulls up, it's all right, because I'm bringing it home every day. I can just touch it up. I can, you know, on the stone, drop it, whatever it is, and get the blade back to, uh, back to sharp. So, so this one's been cool. Um, I've enjoyed this one. I did a review on, I think it's the Index, which I liked before. It was a bit, uh, a little bit too heavy for me when it came to EDCing on a regular basis. Um, but this one, this one will be in the rotation. And, um, yeah, it's been cool. They talk about how it has like a double, double, finger guard or finger choil, like one there and then one here. I, I, I would not say double finger, finger choil as like a uh, promotion or something to say, here's something really unique about this knife. But it is nice that that choil there, you can get your finger up in. I mean, you can really choke up and do some detail work uh, with this knife. So this is the first one, again, kettlebell, around 27 bucks, 7CR17 MOV is your steel. And if you're looking for a super budget friendly knife that's kind of cool and unique, maybe you want to check this one out. 
Knife number two is this, which is the flat iron. So this is going to run you around 35 maybe 37 bucks. Um, this is the aluminum, which has got a gray handle, and then there's also a G10 one, which has a desert tan handle. I saw this at SHOT Show earlier this year, 2018, and I was just like, yes, liking that one a lot. Um, just the cleaver style is cool. The rip snort came out from CRKT pretty recently. I got it and it just didn't appeal to me. It was weird that the handle was like tapered down at the end. It just felt goofy. It looked kind of goofy to me. So I like cleaver styles, but that one, which I got before this was like, just not, not doing it for me. Actually reached out to, um, reached out to Gerber over there and said, Hey, can you send, one, want to send me one of those? I want to use it, check it out. And they were all out. So it's clearly been a popular knife. So this is 7CR17 MOV again. I thought it was 5CR17 or 5CR13. So again, that's not the ultimate steel, but it's better than the mystery steel. Um, and again, for an EDC knife, you can bring it home, sharpen it up, and you should be uh, you should be good to go. Lockup on this one is good. It's not as good as the kettlebell. It is a frame lock again. And I will tell you once again, the uh, the pocket clip is quite snug. The frame lock on this one is tight though. Like so, um, this one's easier to, to once you get it started a little bit to flick open. But um, it's still, it's very, it's very snug. It's not one that I think I'm gonna ever be at the point where I just phew, my thumb and flick it open and have it, uh, have it open up. So yeah, so th I got this actually from Poor Man's Prepper or Poor Man's Preparedness Prepper Box. Poor Man Pre Prepper Preparedness Box. I'll put the annotation in here. I'll, I'll put a little clip in here. But Poor Man's Preparing Prep Box. That's a lot of alliteration anyhow he does like a monthly box and this was he did like one that had kind of a food cooking theme and this was what was included so I think that's cool you know it kind of goes along it's a cleaver so you think about preparing food and stuff um, it's a cool cool knife pretty slim profile and again not super not super heavy not super light um, but you can see you can see what that looks like no uh, n nothing milled out on the inside of the handle 35 bucks you're probably not gonna get that but I like the I like the look and the style of it, and it's a cleaver style. You can choke way up there, and it's got a pretty good you know length of pull as far as just the size of the uh, the size of the blade. So you'll be able to slice and cut things quite effectively. This one end to end, we're looking at 8.5 inches and 3.8 for your uh, for your blade. Obviously, you've got the, the thumb hole there to open it open it, and you got no uh, no option for a lanyard hole, and it's going to be tip up right hand carry only. That's what it looks like when it's folded up. I'll roll in some footage now of this knife in use. Um, on the Gerber website, I think they actually have like a picture of the flat iron and somebody's like cutting a branch off like some sort of evergreen tree. I wouldn't consider this like an outdoors knife. You could certainly use it in the outdoors, um, but it's much more everyday carry for me. So slicing boxes, slicing cordage rope, you know, cutting twine, things like that. Um, I could see this, this being a cool knife for that. And I have used it for those tasks. It's funny, both the kettlebell and the flat iron I've used to cut food. Like, so I'm out with my kids and you know, I'm like, oh, I got a, we got a piece of pizza that's too big for my son, so we're gonna cut it in half, and boom, like, I'll use these knives. Not to be surprised, they can both cut pizza. I mean, like, that's that's not saving the day or anything, but that's that's how I've ended, ended up using them in EDC uh, type roles over the past, I don't know, whatever, month, let's say, give or take. So yeah, flat iron, second knife. So 27 bucks, and then up to 35, 36, 37 bucks for this one. Both these are more on the budget side, um, but but again, cool kind of styles, unique and different. Now we're gonna bump it up to a, another level as far as steel price, and uh, I think overall function and strength of the knife. Whenever I'm out shooting video, it always seems like there's planes flying overhead, like right in the area that I'm at. Um, today, no planes, but we got geese that are flying off in the background now. So always, always keeping it interesting here at Everyday Tactical Vids. Anyhow, this next knife is a significant jump up. It's going up to $204 at Blade HQ. It's the 06 Auto in Multicam. Now you can That's get Auto without the Multicam in just the black. You can get it, they had a, um, like a, a forest green color. Some of them come with serrations, without serrations. Aluminum handle, S30V for your steel. Um, it is an auto, so you've got the, uh, the button right there. We've got the safety right there, so when the safety is engaged, press the button, it doesn't do anything. When the safety is dis disengaged, so red is dead, now you press the button and it opens. A couple things about this knife. I've used this one the most out of any of these knives um, as far as some more aggressive tasks, and it's, I mean, it's just a big, beefy, big, beefy knife, so it works well. The thing I would say about the releasing or the opening mechanism is that I use the word goopy. I don't find it to snap. I was actually looking at a kni uh, some knives the other day from a different company and they sent me an auto one to kind of give some thoughts on and it was almost it was almost too snappy because it would 
open up and hit like the you know the locking mechanism it would open hit and then kind of come back and then if you released it right then it would be kind of loose and flopping in place and yeah that's probably not clear but anyhow all that to say that one really had snap this one doesn't have have as much snap so it opens and I find if I like sit and do this a bunch of times it seems to get a little bit more snap um, but whatever whatever is you know going on in the mechanism the spring system that's launching the blade out it they probably could have used something a little bit stronger here's what I like about this nice knife s30v steel the multicam I think is really cool and it's super stout I mean this is a knife like if you're like I want to invest in one EDC knife you can have auto knives in your um, you know your municipality where you live whatever state city um, this is one I don't think you're gonna be disappointed in I have the DMF which is s30v steel um, it's a Tonto um, a little bit more aggressive grip on the handle and it's got serrations as well I like that knife I like this one more. I also have this one in that forest green, which I think is really cool. But this, yeah, it's just a cool knife, multicam, and it's not like the photocopy of multicam. I don't know if you can you see it up here, right there. Let's see, if you get it close enough. Yeah, it says multicam, so it's like the real multicam, real deal. Um, it's definitely a big knife. Some people are gonna think it's too large to keep to carry in a pocket, or it just looks too aggressive. Totally get that. Um, if you want to tone it down, maybe you go from multicam to the uh, the black or the um, the forest green but still it's it's a larger knife the pocket clip on this one is quite snug this one actually is actually easier to use though than the other two this one just has a little bit more flex a little bit more give um, than the other two I just found those a little bit hard to get in and out of my uh, in and out of my pocket but cool knife rolling some footage here to show you what it looks like in use so you can see um, yeah, just what it looks like to do some cutting tasks. So definitely a strong, uh, a strong knife, something you can use for EDC tasks, but also more aggressive tasks. Certainly a knife that I would use out in the woods, no problem. It would, it would hold up to all that use. And S30V is a, it's a really good steel, you know. So you're not going to have the issues of like a 5CR um, or what I was saying, 7CR, 17 MOV. That's, it's going to dull up. It's just, it's not as strong as steel. Um, it's going to cost you more though, you know, compared to the. Uh, the kettlebell you're not talking 10 times but you're talking like eight or nine times the uh the cost depending on where you pick that up so 06 auto in multicam liking it three new knives from gerber two lower end one definitely higher end but uh yeah i've enjoyed edcing these knives this one is um this one is one that i have edc'd the most and used the most and i liked it quite a bit i was actually just looking at the blade i don't know can you see there? there's like a little bit of pink on the blade from some slicing I've done. I don't know if you can see that at all. Pink? Can you see the pink? I don't know if you can see it. There's a little bit of pink on the blade. It must be from cutting through boxes and stuff. But anyhow, that's the 06 Auto in Multicam. So I want to hear your thoughts on Gerber and on these three knives. Um, these are the ones that jumped out to me from their latest push. Um, another one that, that, I, that was interesting was this. they have the spine and the vertebrae. They're kind of like, they look sort of like a, a little bit beefier Mora. Um, I think they use 7CR for that as well, so um, you know I'd rather more as stainless steel and more just say it makes you know some of the greatest fixed blade economical you know budget friendly knives out there I think. So uh, I'm interested to hear what you think about these and other Gerber knives. Um, I like to pass this information on to Gerber after you guys leave comments and you know they check their videos to see what's going on, see what the response is. You know, I'd be interested to see what you guys think about Gerber as a company. And uh, yeah, and what they have to uh, what they have to offer, what they've done in the past, and where they're going in the future. All right, everybody, thank you for checking out the video here. Please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids. All right, everybody, I don't I don't think I've ever said that before in a in a video, but anyhow, thanks for watching the videos here on YouTube. Please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids if you haven't done so already. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, check us out on Instagram, Tumblr, and Vero as well. More videos coming soon. Take care.